Hello. All right. Uh, back after a while here. Uh, I've spent much of this year amassing funds uh, to fix the car, and I was fixing the car to make a trip to Portland once again, like I did last year. Only this year, it was actually far better planned. It's actually the first time I've gone to Portland without getting hellaciously lost on the way into the city. This is actually the most successful trip I've taken there yet. This time, uh, I decided I was going to go really balls out, and I made not one, but three different visits to Powell's Books. Um, with the help of a gift card for part of it. But I amassed uh, quite a haul I'm going to show you here in a second. Uh, but first I'd like to say a word about the hotel where I was confined uh, when I was in Portland. So I made my first reservation. Uh, it was entirely price-based. I didn't look into any other factors, not location. or Well, location was one. But um, it was entirely price-based, and I wound up staying in a Howard Johnson's motel, of all things. Howard Johnson's by Wyndham now, what they called him, I guess. Um, and, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna show you here, um, it was, it was an especially, like, like, a non-modernized, uh, facility, is in, they, they had Wi-Fi and all that, the room still, you know, had a telephone, no clock radio, uh, wall-mounted modern TV, but about everything else was left, you know, I assume as it had been in, like, the 70s or 80s, um, it, it looked, like, from the street, like a crummy apartment building, and the lobby was an embarrassment, there was a mural above the, uh, above the desk and all that, and some really embarrassing, like, gutter-like uh, aluminum molding. Um, and they seem to have quite a lot of problems, actually, being, you know, budget motel and all that. I, actually, um, while, while I was waiting uh, to check in, uh, several different people had issues with keys, and then I wound up having a partial issue with the key. It was sort of right of itself, but it seemed like everything was sort of, uh, <laughs> you know, sort of, sort of fading out. But, you know, uh, uh, on the whole, very successful trip. Uh, I'm proud of myself for doing an adult thing here and for buying a crap load of books, uh, most of all. So let's look over those, shall we? Uh, like last year, I think I'm mostly going to work from biggest to smallest, although I'm going to break it up a little bit when I have multiple author things. Purely by size, this is a massive, massive Dover book. This is the 1895... Montgomery Ward catalog reprinted by Dover. Talked a lot about Dover on previous videos, so I'm not going to waste your time now. It's a lot like the Sears Roebuck catalog, which is more famous. Sears Roebuck, you know, being all iconic, being toilet paper and all that in the 19th century. I actually did not know that Montgomery Ward was a chain stemming back to the 19th century. I just sort of think of them as a chain that's no longer around, kind of like Sears. <laughs> this is this is massive. This is over 600 pages of like wonderful engraved 19th century illustration. You can kind of get the idea. I actually found this uh, in a collectible section on the art section on the top floor of Powell's. A little bit random, a little bit, you know, guilty pleasure of me since it's not really a reading. It's not necessarily an art book either, but it's really cool. A little bit more reasonable. These are also Dovers, by the way. These are two different uh, collections of Arthur Rackham illustrations. Um, I don't know if you know him, he's more or less influential on me, although he's not one of my main guys. Uh, these are both by a fellow by, uh, by the name of Jeff Menges, full cover. I'm sure there's some repetition in here, and there's two different ones, but, you know, like, his his stuff is just really keen. That was that was a must. This book, uh, we're really going on a theme here, because this book is also a Dover edition. This is Designed by Accident by Jeff O'Brien. This book I largely purchased because this was one of the books that I used to take out from the Simi Valley Library back when I was a kid growing up in Southern California. So, major nostalgia. If I find anything there that I used to take out as a library book, I snatch it right up. And a lot of those, uh, this one was not pricey, but some of those get to being pricey just because they tend to be rare 70s editions of things. Also on the art book theme, this time out at Dover, is the Triumph of Art Nouveau Paris Exhibition 1900. You'll see lots of Art Nouveau books around, you know, usually like big old coffee table or paperbacks. Um, but this one is, is an older one, and they're actually trying to do Art Nouveau borders for chapter headings, and plus, you know, it's all, it's focused, you know, it's targeted specifically on that event and that place and time, which I think is pretty cool. This is not an art book. This I actually made, for the first time ever, I made a visit to the Rare Book Room in Powell's, which is on the, the same floor as the art books and such. Uh, this is a children's magazine from 1921, John Martin's uh, book, John Martin's book. There's a thing on the inside page saying it's like number 100 or something like that. I guess I'll, I'll get leaf through it a little bit. You know, it's you can see it's already had a little bit of a battering. It's got two color illustrations. It's got black and red. <laughs> Not that black's a color. See the well-worn paper. 
Um, there's some great, there's some Windsor McKay style illustrations in there. It's not McKay, it's somebody else imitating him. Um, that was fabulous. This, most of what was in the rare book room was up in, into the hundreds and such. This one was only five bucks. Okay, away from the art books now. This is a Carl May book right here. Carl May was a German author in the 19th century. He died in 1912. He's more or less one of the progenitors of the Western. He wrote travel logs set in the American Old West, which was current then, and he claimed that they happened to him. They were actually, in fact, very well-researched fiction, but uh, he, he really captivated the German public. He was one of the most popular authors there for quite some time after his death as well. I've read one book from him before. I've read The Black Persian. I think this is the same series, The Secret Brotherhood. He also wrote Winter 2, created the character of Old Shatterhand, which was adapted to some films. If you're European, you may know about that, or if you're a fan of Lex Barker, you might know about that. Now this right here is a fairly, well, actually fairly large print. Um, the Dracula Book of Great Horror Stories by uh, Leslie Shepard. I almost put this one back because I, I looked through my records and found that I actually already owned a Wesley Shepard Dracula Book of, except I found out at the last minute that that was the Dracula Book of Vampire Stories, which they also had. So, luckily, made it home with this. This I already own in another form, but this is a Dover edition. You see I have a weakness for these. Uh, Varney the Vampire or the Feast of Blood by Malcolm James Reimer. I covered this in another video. I'm not going to say a lot about it. I think the reason this came so cheap is that it is Volume 2 of 2. Volume 1 is not included. But, like I said, I already own it in another edition, so Volume 1, I can just read the first half of that if it comes down to brass decks. Plus, this is, you know, got the illustrations, and it's just pretty, is all. Okay, this is an author series right here, so I'm just like, I'm gonna lay these down here all at once. So, uh, one, of the, one of the authors I seem to never leave uh, Powell's without, they've always got some of his, is Sax Romer. Because he wrote the long-running Fu Manchu series, among other things. See, there he is in his robe, you know. And some, I got some vintage hardbacks of his stuff. This is, this is a non-series one. Yawn, he, see, laughs, more yellow peril, stuff right there, fire tongue, this is uh, part of one of the series, I don't remember the name of the guy the series is about, he had a few, but none of them took off quite the way the Fu Manchu one did, I mean, the man's a household word, got played by Boris Karloff and Christopher Lee, among other people, always by white people, oh, forgot to include this, this is, this is a pyramid edition, uh, Fu Manchu, uh, cover illustration is really different from the general theme on these, I really like this font, it's really keen looking, I'm pretty sure this is the late 60s printing, you know, no, 76, 76, but yeah. That's lovely. Random one-off, I got a Perry Rodan, a Snowman in Flames. Um, the, the long, another long-running uh, European series, mostly written under the name of uh, Clark Darleton, uh, really written by a guy named Ernst Ding, and I forget the other fellow's name. Uh, both Germans, I believe. I've, I've been collecting these. I haven't read any of these yet. I might stop collecting cold once I start reading them, like I've done with a few other series. Or, you know, I may embrace it and get all the several hundred of them that there are. These are both are both Dovers, and not really the main reason that I got them, but I, I was decided I'm going to continue to collect Ambrose Bierce, having actually started to read him now. We got his Civil War stories. This is Dover Thrift Edition, um, so there's not a lot. It's sort of no frills. You see, it's, it's got the, the clip art cover illustration. Uh, I actually recently ordered a new Dover Thrift Edition. I found they changed the design. The new ones had this... Uh, this uh, awful uh, iridescent blue, like, warped band uh, across the middle for the Dover thing. I think it's ugly as sin. I think they really uh, screwed the pooch on that one. And this is the sardonic humor of Ambrose Bierce. I think this is mostly his verse, but since it's, you know, bitter beers, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with it anyway. Okay, there's stories in there, too. Yeah. Oddly enough, none of these Dovers are Bleeler. I thought he was, like, their guy, but, like, I guess I guess other people got a shot at it. Uh, when I say Bleeler, I'm referring to E.F. Bleeler, the editor. See, this one is this guy named George Barkin. One of the great things about Powell's is you can get stuff there that you're basically not going to find elsewhere. In other used bookstores or whatever else. Like, these these are a couple of, of uh, I think these were probably done in the 70s. They're basically zines. And they're reprinting stuff. Yeah, 77. Yeah. Typewriter font. So they're re reprinting, like, old pulp stories. And sometimes, I think that's probably, yeah, with fresh illustrations. <laughs> like, like this, this, this one especially. Um, you can see it's got the Blue Book and Argosy, you know, Weird Tales. And uh, with super science stories, the back's blank. Uh, these are both fairly cheap, but like the they're, the content, they got they got guys I'm actually gonna wanna get into reading. Along to see William Hope Hodgson, you know this that's one fella. I don't you know these probably won't even have Goodreads entries. I think I just got the one Talbot Mundy uh, this time. This is a hardback, vintage hardback, uh, Winds of the World. Uh, Talbot Mundy uh, wrote the Tross series, Tross of Samothrace, which is a historical adventure series with, with a, a guy uh, sort of taking on ancient Rome. So this one's been a little battered about. You can see it's taped back together there, and you can actually see the brownish blue of the spine seats in, in 1917. Uh, Mundy uh, was an influence on Robert E. Howard. That's one of the reasons I started reading him. I actually have read him. I'm pretty satisfied so far. They tried to tape this back into 
place, you see, and the glue is all like crystallized or whatever there. But you know, that's something to look forward to. I'll have to be gentle with that one. Uh, this is this is a fella I've been collecting. This is Otis Adelbert Klein, one of uh, Edgar Rice Burroughs competitors and uh, one of the uh, Weird Tales editors, actually. This is Prince of Peril. This is the, the second in his uh, Peril trilogy. They're set on Venus. And I, I actually have started reading the first one, actually, just a couple days before I found this. So this completes at 9 now on the whole trilogy. They're Ace Editions. Uh, some of the Ace Editions of Klein actually had a little bit of uh, uh, editorial trickery. There were partly some parts of them, like the prologues were rewritten to represent the science of the 1960s, to hide like the 1930s, quote unquote, embarrassments. Uh, something that I don't really support, but you know, since it's in the 60s, it's, itself is a piece of history. I mostly just want to read it, and you know, these look really pretty on a shelf. Uh, one more thing about Klein is that there was a there was an article published uh, in the 30s saying that uh, Burroughs uh, felt like Klein had knocked him off, which he sort of had when he started writing his Venus series. So Burroughs, in retaliation, wrote his own Venus series. Uh, there's five books in that. And so after that, Klein also wrote a Mars series. The Mars series is the one I've read the first one of, Swordsman of Mars, which is actually really solid for being a complete knockoff of something else. <laughs> anyway, the article was a complete fabrication, but it's, it's cute to think of these guys like trying to outdo each other, especially when it results in writings that I actually enjoy. Speaking of genre guys, I got, uh, these, are, these are also both vintage Ace editions, actually. Short ones, that's, that's what makes those fun. Uh, this is this is Henry Cutner. Uh, Henry Cutner was one of the guys who wrote some uh, like Conan imitators. Wrote this, these stories about this fellow who was the king of Atlantis, and nobody else could sit on the throne of fire or something like that. It's the only thing I've actually read from him so far, apart from this other short story that was like this humorous haunted house thing. But he wrote with C. L. Moore, who you may have heard of, or the Jarell of Jory stories or whatever. I'm probably saying that wrong. They were husband and wife, and they they were so in tune with each other as writers that one of them could just sit down at the typewriter and start something, and the other one could finish it, and it'd be utterly seamless. Like they completely jived with one another. I right, see so you got like a floating continent there or something, a floating city, you know, island, whatever. Yeah, and that one's got a little bit of a one. So, you know, these these will probably be pretty keen. Uh, Cutner died very young. I think he died in, like, the late 50s. Uh, but he'd been writing in the 30s. He was one of those Weird Tales-type guys, you know. So that's that's why I cued in on him. Actually did do a couple of uh, Zane Grey. One's a Zane Grey, one's a Max Brand. But they're both, like, early period westerns. Writing, like, the 1910s, 1920s. That's largely why I collect these guys. I've never really been super interested in the western genre. Especially something to read. But I take these as like sort of like the period pulp adventure fantasy element sort of thing, since since it's it's all going to be done, you know, with with that ele with you know with that adventure adventure writer's uh, brush, not necessarily looking to do revisionist or factual or like stuffy John Wayne type stuff either. Like at least that's what I'm hoping to get from these. These guys are sort of getting into it on the ground floor in terms of the 20th century writers, in terms of guys whose stuff came out as books and not as. Uh, and not as uh, serialized magazine stories. So I've got two different Wilkie Collins ones here. Um, I'd, I'd seen in the collection, I've seen photos anyway, of, of a Wilkie Collins' book, The Haunted Hotel, that I really wanted to get. I didn't realize it itself was a short, so I got this book that has three Wilkie Collins stories, including Haunted Hotel. So, you know, good deal for me. Um, don't know how the other ones are going to go. The other one is, once again, a Dover. Lovely Dover. Look at that. <laughs> And this is the Tales of Terror and the Supernatural. Uh, Collins wrote the Moonstone. He's most famous for that. But I've, I've been collecting like everything I could get my hands on from him. Actually, left behind a couple of gigantic ones here. This is the Monk. This is the Monk by Matthew Lewis. This is a famous uh, Gothic. I think I think Gothic type horror type type of a tale. Matthew Lewis wrote a lot of other stuff that I was interested in collecting. I have a whole list of things from him that I've always got my eye for. You can never find the other things though. You can only find the Monk, which pisses me off. I just really hate like like uh, Dumas, right? You know, Dumas wrote probably hundreds of books. You know, I don't know if it's literally hundreds. He wrote a load of books. And all you can find from Dumas is like the Three Musketeers and The Man in the Iron Mask. And uh, there's a third one in there and I really should be remembering it right now. Anyway, you know, you only ever find like the, like Jules Verne. You know, it's like, oh, there's 20,000 leagues under the sea and around the world in 80 days. If it doesn't have the number of the title, we don't want it. Like maybe five weeks in a balloon if you're lucky. And ignoring all the other stuff that he did. So that's why for a long time I'd keep finding this book and not buying this book. It's like, well, you know, screw you. I want the other Matthew G. Lewis books. But this is a really, like, charming looking 50s edition of it. Since this one gets reprinted so much, I had my pick of the monk there. They had like 10 different editions of it, maybe. Some of which were really new and modern and hideous with like bad Photoshop covers. But Leo Perutz, this is a real departure for me because this is a hardback thing with like that, like, a fake woodcut cover and all that. Like, 
some Louise Borges or whatever the hell. Anyway, this is uh, Leo Perutz, the By Night Under the Stone Bridge. I think this might actually be some form of a romance, but I've read a little bit up on Perutz. He sounds like he was just like a really interesting, like mostly, I think primarily a literary writer, but his stuff had like weird undercurrents in it, you know, like kind of like a Robert W. Chambers almost maybe. Um, I don't remember all the details right now. I think the book I would really wanted to find from him was something called From Nine to Nine. But uh, again, you know, like, I was lucky to even find this. I've never actually seen Perutz in stores before. So I, that's the great thing about Powell. They're probably going to have something from the guy you're looking for, a lady that you're looking for. It might not be the one though. <laughs> had that happen at a time or two, especially this visit. I got one Robert E. Howard. This time they were actually very sparse on Robert E. Howard's. They had mostly like those uh, those giant size. I think they're... I went with this one. It's a Bain Books, uh, Trails in Darkness. Uh, I think this is going to be uh, the types of Howard stories that are mostly a hot-headed guy in like the piney backwoods of like, you know, Texas or wherever else he chooses to set it, you know, running up against some kind of like probably voodoo horror or something. Moon and Zimbabwe's on that one. Black Canaan which is really reprinted too often. Um, a lot of these, from the introductions, you can't tell which story you're reading unless you check the title, and even then you may not be sure since he had them under multiple titles. I love Howard, but he, he did this for a living, so he repeated to himself a few times. A time or two, anyway. Anyway, I got uh, two different H. Ryder Haggards in this one in this batch. Uh, H. Ryder Haggard created Alan Quatermain, uh, wrote King Solomon's Mines, and there was actually a whole long-running series of that, most of which were not adapted to film. King Solomon's Mines has been adapted to film several times. This is a non-series one called People of the Mist. Got a nice uh, kind of a wraparound cover on it there. And uh, this one is one printed in-house, printed by Powell's. I love how they put the year right there. It's so grand! And, uh, so this this is uh, the spirit of uh, bombast, I guess, or bombast, however you say that, but... Anyway, it's Haggard, so it's going to be that, that fun kind of, uh, you know, adventure thing, you know, probably with an exotic setting. You know, I'm looking forward to it. This leaves the two smallest, uh, probably shortest books that I got uh, at Powell's this time around. We have uh, Giacomo Casanova, The Duel. There's not a lot there, but uh, I've, uh, there's actually a specific Casanova book that I've tried to find at Powell's every time I've gone there. Online, you can't find it cheap. It's called the Eco Samarin. It's out. It's a. I think that's how you say it. It's a Hollow Earth thing. It's supposed to be really bizarre. Uh, but they did have a Casanova. And like I said, they'll have one from the guy you're looking for, if not the one. So I went ahead and took that one. And the other one is Algernon Blackwood, The Empty House, A Ghost Story for Christmas. This is little little bitty book right here. It's even it's even smaller than the Casanova. Um, and it's got little really rudimentary illustrations. I don't especially care for those, but. Um, you know, it's 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 a short story that has its own book, so uh, that should be fun. Anyway, that's how my uh, my run to Powell's went uh, this this time around. Now, like I said, it was actually not one visit but three. I went twice on the first day with a meal in between, and uh, I I had the advantage of having the hotel room, so I had more energy to like pursue books uh, for longer. You know, which is which was the big failing of when I went last year. I was on foot and I just tired myself out getting lost and. Like, you know, wandering around, plus that was in August, it was a lot hotter, the fires were still going on. Uh, luckily the fires have subsided for now, up here. Um, but yeah, no, this, this uh, on the whole, very successful visit, I'm very pleased with myself, I didn't get lost. You know, no horrible catastrophe. Just, you know, a, a good a good old uh, vacation like, like I'd been hoping for, and as you can see, just a shitload. Books.